So I think Jordan kind of covered it, but just to recap, uh, Jeff Flaherty and VJ Novak are the co-founders of the Liz app. Uh, Jeff Flaherty was previously the senior vice president of user experience at Fab. And uh, BJ is a stand-up comedian, he's an author, and you probably know him best as a writer, executive producer, and co-star on The Office. He was Ryan Howard. So thank you guys. Thanks for coming out here. Thanks, Craig. Thanks. Yeah. So elevator pitch style, you know, one or two sentences, super quick. What is the List app? Sir? Well, first of all, uh, as we're announcing today, we are now List. We decided okay. to drop the the and drop the app. We were going to really bombard people with with uh, change all at once. Uh, so, so, it's just, so we're just now list, list li.st. And the idea is a place where people can communicate in this extremely elemental form of communication. We all have lists in our head, we all have lists in our phone, and we have our whole life in this easy to communicate format that for some reason people haven't had an easy way to share. So this is sort of a, a smart, creative, friendly, substantive, social way to communicate through the list. Okay. What makes it special? What makes it something that no one else can do? Well, other people here could do it. I think what makes it special is the people. And I think a very simple form that Dev can take a lot of credit for, something that looks and feels great and intuitive, and that has therefore invited a lot of people that are really making up this incredible community of very diverse, not only diverse people, but diverse um, uh, areas of humor and of personality and of, you know, people that you do know saying unexpected things. So I think we gave a format that I think, uh, you know, I'm, I'll, I won't take a bow on behalf of Dev and the team, but that is very uh, friendly and intuitive and simple, and then the community is what makes it special. Yeah, we, when we first started, we weren't really sure what was going to be the predominant thing that people were making lists about. Like, all we knew is that we wanted to create, like, a, I call it categorically agnostic, form where it wasn't driving you too hard down any one specific vertical, like places or TV or food or books or thoughts or whatever, or opinions, whatever it might be. Just this very basic, simple template and just kind of see what happened. We had some ideas about whether it would be a mix that was more weighted towards practical or more weighted towards self-expression, but we really didn't have anything to kind of point towards to say, oh, this is it's going to be the predominant theme. Um, and I think what's really cool is that uh, there's something really interesting that happens when you don't have to think about syntax. Um, and, you know, just asking a very simple question like, Greg, how was your day today? Tell me what happened. And asking you to do that in a paragraph structure sure. versus a list okay. structure. And I think it just kind of really changes and makes it so much easier. And you kind of, it, it, it lets you write and get your thoughts out without having to worry so much about the structure of the thought. Sure. And that leads just, to, just to give people a little bit more context, what are some of, let's say, your, your favorite lists. What are, the, what, are, uh, what are some of the things that people are actually making in it that you've really enjoyed? Sure. Um, one of the ones actually just happened, uh, came out yesterday, Mother's Day, one of our friends and favorite users, Jack Waz, um, made a list, uh, I think of the exact title, I'm going to paraphrase it, but was um, Reasons I Miss My Mother. It was on my, his mother had died, and it was like a, a very thoughtful, like heartfelt list about, you know, kind of why Mother's Day was hard for him and how it was all centered around not having someone to... Um, to talk to while he was driving, because the thing in LA, we need something to do while we drive. Um, and you know, it ranges all from, from very kind of personal emotional lists on that spectrum towards you know, very kind of fun, but still personal, but practical lists like my wife, Hallie, makes lists all the time about you know, her favorite hikes and photographs like various places but, you know, along the hikes and hey, here's some cool like, spots you should go check out if you ditch off of this trail for a minute. Um, so yeah, just whether it's um, practical or not, there's this very, very intrinsic personal vibe to most of the lists that are made. There are already over 250,000 lists on the platform, so you can imagine the different directions they go in when you have all these different people trying something in the early days. Um, Asa Akira, who many of you will pretend not to have heard of, uh, is a, an adult film star. She made a list, How I Prepare for Work. It was extremely interesting, the combination of physical stuff and emotional stuff that you go through before that. And I think, you know, if you asked someone, in, anyone in this room, hey, could you write me a quick essay on what it was like on your way to disrupt? I'd be like, oh, are you serious? But if you were to ask, hey, could you just list your thoughts on the way here? It comes out really easily. So I think that's why we expected it to be a little more practical. But in fact, it's very personal. If you list your favorite hikes, you're actually saying a lot about you. 
and, uh, and that is what comes out in the margins even of a recommendation list. Sure. So I know that you guys had some news. Uh, you mentioned the, the rebranding from the, the list app to, to just list with the, uh, the dot in the middle there. Yep. Uh, what else was there? Um, today we are officially live on Android. Um, we've been live iOS only for about six months now, and today we uh, just launched a fully functional Android application. So sure. tell all Very your cool. is that live text friends now. Huh? Is that live now? Live now in the Play Store. Yep. Okay. Very cool. How'd you two meet? Blind date. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess the tech version of a blind date. I had this idea, this very basic idea, uh, you know, as we kind of opened with, we love lists. Every time you talk to someone and say, I'm working on a list app, they say, I love lists. Why is there just not a place for all of our lists? So that was about as far as I had worked it out. I thought I was pretty much done. <laughs> and I asked around, hey, is there someone that you know that you could, uh, I'd ask every friend I had in tech, uh, do you know anyone that could build this with me? And I realized, uh, very quickly, it's, it's like finding a spouse or a showrunner in TV. It's the hardest ask in the world, a co-founder. So I met people who introduced me to people, introduced me to people, who suddenly I found this person that I knew, like you know, with I guess a spouse or a showrunner. I was like, all right, this is the guy, how do I convince him? And, uh, and so we met in, in New York. Uh, what was that like from your side, Dev? Um, so it was, act I think it was, uh, Probably a lot less. Was it was it surreal? Was it just out of the blue? Well, it was pretty much out of the blue, and I'll be totally honest. I, I I'm not a huge TV person, and I asked my wife who BJ Novak was, um, and then she told me. And Get this asshole. <laughs> and I've never seen The Office, and, and so yeah, so we met up, and um, you know, we just I don't know, like we immediately just kind of bonded, just like personally, like we were both wearing the same watch and ordered the same scotch serendipitously, and it just I don't know, we kind of gelled there, and then as we started to talk out just the basic thought of the idea, I guess the thing that struck me pretty immediately and really excited me was this idea that, you know, uh, the list has like totally redefined publishing, right? But I don't think there's been anything that's taken enough, that's really explored, okay, the fine, that's done. Publishing. Like, yeah, what if, exploring that to UGC, and, you know, creating a platform and a community where people can take that form and kind of be a version of their own BuzzFeed sure. for themselves with, you know, the same sort of circle that you'd surround yourself with on Twitter or on Instagram. Sure. Um, and I don't know, I just had that kind of basic concept in my head by the end of the dinner, and I was like, this sounds great. Let's I'll also say as a celebrity, um, uh, you tend to be treated as an idiot or a genius sure. by everyone who meets you, and here was someone who treated me like a guy with a pretty good idea that wasn't necessarily great yet. And so that was sort of what I was looking for, someone okay. that really took this seriously and didn't exaggerate either side of it. So do you think in your case, has being a celebrity helped or has it hurt you? Um, I think it's helped in yeah. terms of it opens doors and people will pick up the phone and check out what you're doing, but it doesn't get you that far. I think it, it opens the door and then there's a, there's a whole array of bouncers at the sure. door, yeah. um, and then you have to actually have something in the show. But it's certainly open source. Do you ever find yourself meeting people that are wary because you're a celebrity? Because there have been other celebrities that have handled this differently. They have someone come to them with a pre-built right. app, and they go, OK, cool, I'll slap my, my face on that, or I'll slap my name on that. I was extremely self-conscious about that reputation, and I wanted to do this. I wanted to do my homework yeah. and uh, be ready to be the least smart person in the room. I think if you, if you follow those two principles, when you enter a new field, that's as good as, as you can start out. So I was very conscious of, uh, of not being that and of, of really building it and trying it uh, before we even talked about it, really getting somewhere first. So I, I if anything, was, was oversensitive to that because I do see people think that things will be easy and I'm from the background, assume it will be hard. Okay. So the iOS app launched at the end of uh, last year, so it's been about six months. Yep, yep. Um, Almost exactly. Yep. How long were you working on it before launch? We started talking about it uh, in the beginning, late late 2000, I guess. Beginning of 15? Yeah, yeah. and January. then um, we were in, in private beta, actually, for a while, um, about seven, eight months. And we really kind of grew out the community quite slowly over the course of that time, and people, you know, in stages, invited their friends and expanded that way, and just like inviting, 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 and um, that translated into something really cool because it let this community kind of 
build its strength and its positivity and its right. vibrancy in like this a little cocoon of sorts. And what's been really exciting and awesome to see is that it hasn't missed a step since going live. Like that that ethos and that that personality and and positivity really has held through public launch and growth. Um, it's great to see. And the creativity too. I think. Yeah. Okay. So right when you guys launched, you had uh, a pretty substantial user base of celebrities. Just right on, uh, right out of the gate, they were there. How was that coordinated? Um, I asked the people that I knew that that you know if there are eight or ten celebrities on, they they tend to get recognized. Um, it wasn't a disproportionate number, sure. but I think it was really fun to have it be this private beta with a bunch of celebrities kind of walking around. It was like a party sure. um, where you recognize some of the people there, and I think it really helped set the tone looking back of a, a really equal community where it didn't feel like people were inauthentic, there was no one's publicist making a list, there was no fear, right or wrong, it turned out to be right, no fear that, that Lena Dunham is going to get harassed or anything, uh, because at that point it was a very small, um, very small group, and then eventually it, uh, when it got bigger, that attitude had still, had still maintained. Has having those celebrities at launch helped in the long run? Did the users that came for those people, did they stick around? I think it's and the have the celebrities as, stuck around? I think it's the same as what I was saying before. It, it's a great to open the door. It's very exciting to hear that Anthony Bourdain is there posting. Yeah. Um, then once you get there, you might realize he's making lists of his favorite spy novels, not his favorite restaurants, you know? Um, so I think, yeah, it's, it's great. I'm proud of all these people. It's not like I went through and just picked everyone out of a magazine. Like, I, Andy Cohen is a smart, funny guy. It's not like there was any other thing behind that. Sure. But I think that, uh, that that spirit, yeah, it's exciting. It's exciting to have people you recognize, but at the end of the day, it's like anything else. It will not take you the distance at all. I think it, it also, the, while the celebrity angle isn't a huge part of it, it, it it's an, I think it's really representative of what's so crazy cool about the platform is that these people who, you know, you have some understanding of, and it's largely at a surface level, you see the list that they're making, and it's just a categorically different, way more in-depth look into yeah. who they are. And it kind of like speaks to the, the, the type of expression that the platform brings out in everybody. Um, but I think it's, it's when you can juxtapose it with an idea that you have or, you know, an understanding that you have previously of someone, I think it makes it all the more stark. And I think it also set the tone a little bit like who is on that the people know. Are a lot of the celebrities that you mentioned were writers and yeah. creative people and funny people, and I think that kind of helped set a tone of that being the community. Yeah, sure. And even in the beta, like, I mean, I think, I think these folks have a, have a tendency to kind of... Um, they're, they're, they're big personalities, and so it can seem like they're a larger part of the community than they are. They're really, at the end of the day, are probably sure. only, I don't know, maybe 200, maybe 250, 300 people of note that are actually like on the platform. And in, yeah. even in beta, we had like 6,000 folks, so they were a pretty small part of that pie. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys mentioned a couple numbers earlier as to how many people were on the platform, how many lists were being made. Can you repeat those? Yeah, we've had um, about upwards of 250,000 counting lists made. Sure. Um, got about 150,000 users, um, and yeah. Okay. It's so, early days. It's exciting. Yeah, no, early yeah. days. Yeah. So you're, uh, you're already on iOS. Now you're on Android. Yep. What's next? Is it, is it the web? Yeah, so that was another thing we definitely wanted to mention. Um, web, we're trucking. Um, my goal is in the next four to six weeks to launch a web product. Um, okay. We'll do, so we'll so a web viewing product or huh? a, web, a web creation product? No, it's going to be like the full suite of capabilities that you can do on the iOS and Android apps. We hear that web is the new mobile. I don't know. <laughs> um, but that's also part of the name change to list. You know, okay. we had this great oh, simple yeah. domain and we didn't want it to just be an app anymore. Got it. And it makes so much sense that that 250,000 lists have been typed on iPhone screens tells us what could be done when you can actually be at work and you can actually have some time and a full keyboard. Uh, or it's search, et cetera. We're excited about it. Yeah. And also just timeshare. There's some times when it makes more sense to be on, on your laptop. Sure. Yeah. How has the product changed for your users? What have you learned from them? What product changes have you made as, as a result of what they're telling you? Um, I think, the, I mean, the, uh, we talked about it a little bit earlier, but just uh, the biggest thing has just been how much self-expression is like the core use of this product. Um, people expressing something that is in some way emotional, and that can be that can be raw, that can be very positive. Um, but there's just like all very often, 
if you read a list, there's a very solid chance it's going to have something to do with me expressing like emotion, emotion, express, expressing how I'm feeling, what my thoughts are in a passionate way. Um, and so we've really, really tried to kind of embrace the strength of the community, I guess. Um, and we're always trying to come up with new ways that people can uh, get exposed to new people that they might like, get exposed to lists that they might like. Because um, we see that these digital connections are very, very strong that people are making with each other. And then they even translate into, like, even so far back as the beta, there were these organically started meetups um, that people just did. Like, someone made a list like, hey, anyone, everyone in LA in the beta, you want to go meet up at a bar? And, like, 100 people showed up. And we kind of, yeah, I'd say if, if, if more than anything else, we just embraced the, like the strength and the vibrancy of the, in the interconnectivity of the community. We try to architect everything. And so now we're doing a list live show next week in Brooklyn at the Bell House, where a bunch of people are going to read okay. their lists. The idea that it's a very expressive form, I, that's kind of where our resources have been headed more. I think at the very beginning, if you asked us to predict where we'd be six months out, there may have been more of an emphasis on oh, if you type in a movie, it should autofill, et cetera, which a lot of places do, and we may well have some day, but yeah. it, it's, it's much more of an expressive community, uh, and I think we've been listening to that. So with regards to making transitions into things like List Live, uh, could this be a, a new talent finding platform? So you have these people that are writing these comedy lists, and then you're bringing them on stage. Is, is this nurturing? Oh, yeah. The, my favorite uh, performance at the last List Live show in, in LA, this guy, uh, Dennis Flynn, I never heard of him before, uh, met him when he came out to LA to do this. He, every, if you look him up on the platform, all he does is thoughts of A, and it's an internal monologue. So of someone in a really bad spot. Someone yeah. in a really bad spot. So yeah, this yeah. was thoughts of a children's birthday party magician who realizes mid-trick that the rabbit in his hat has died. <laughs> and it's like an 80 item list. He's just going through it and, and it, you know, the crowd loved it. So that, that's a great piece of, uh, talent, this girl, yeah, there's really some, some incredible people, and we're going to bring them out on Monday, too. Right. Cool. Right. Sounds good. Uh, so, BJ, back at the end of last year, you guys were on a podcast, uh, on Recode's podcast, and so I'm going I'm to read this right off the card, because I don't want to uh, mis misquote you here, but BJ, you said, uh, I've always admired tech from the outside the way people admired Hollywood. It just seemed like this glamorous, cool thing. So you've been in it for six months now. Yeah. Uh, a little bit longer than that in, in the beta. Does it still seem glamorous? You've been in the trenches. Is it, is it as glamorous as you thought? It is to me, because to me, ideas are front and center. And I, I think being starstruck by someone who is actually inventing the future, someone from Sidewalk Labs, like that to me is so much more interesting than someone who has a slightly different take on a horror movie. You know, it, it's reality in a way that is being dreamt of in real time. So yeah, I, I think it's it's way more yeah. glamorous. Yeah, I can totally see that. The uh, the co-founder of Siri was backstage earlier, and I yeah. looked across the room, and I was like, I have nothing to say to this man. I'm, I'm so like shocked, like so un unable to think of anything to say. Right, which I want is to. why he invented something you can talk to instead of a person. Yeah, <laughs> that exact anxiety. Uh, so what's the what's the end game here? Uh, what is success with this project? Is it making a, a, a profitable big thing? Is it just building a really cool community? When, at what point do you go, all right, we've, we've done a really good job here? When the website crashes. <laughs> I think for me, I would say, if this were the place where everyone thought to put a list, you know, any list that says something about themselves or share something they want to share, mm -hmm. I'd love it on a product level to be the best place to put any list. We got great advice. I ran into Ben Silverman of Pinterest at a restaurant and uh, I asked if we could come in and, and talk to him and get advice because we really admire Pinterest. And his advice was, think about, independent of the product, what is the List app, as it was called at the time? Um, if in 10 years you couldn't recognize the product at all, what would it be? And uh, we all talked about it and thought it would be uh, uh, structured self-expression. So whatever that means to people, if it's a structure that makes self-expression easier, to us, uh, I think the best place in the world for that and that means, you know, as our name says, a list. So I think if this were the best place for everyone to put their thoughts, their feelings, their ideas, their advice, um, whether it's best food to order at this restaurant or thoughts on being a widow, if, if it's all here, I think it would be a wonderful place to explore. And to it, is it a business eventually? Do you care about that? 
I mean, I, I, we're talking about creating something very valuable, mm -hmm. so there will be a way to figure out how to make that very valuable, but I think right now we're focusing on creating something that, that we know in our hearts is valuable. Yeah, I mean, obviously that's, that's something that we, we think about, but right now we're just trying our best to stay laser focused on just building a product that people really love and just keeping this community as strong as it can be as it grows. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I looked around a little bit. I couldn't find it. Uh, have you guys raised any money for this? Any venture capital? Yeah, we raised a, a seed a seed round uh, last May. Okay. Is it disclosed how much? Um, it's good. Yeah, uh, we raised uh, two million dollars. Okay. Yeah. Cool. From um, my uncle. So what sort of list tends to be the most popular? Is it the ones from celebrities? Is it just really, really good stuff from users? It, 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 it I, I wouldn't break it out by an early that way. Okay. It, whether it's from a celebrity or not, and more often than not, it is not. It's, whether, if it's, per, it's, it has to be personal, I find. Like it has to be personal, it has to be revealing, it has to be a little bit like putting yourself out there, being vulnerable. Um, and you know, I think what people are really excited about is the response they get from that. Like all social media trades in, in currency, right? I mean, some form of currency. And what I think is great and so refreshing here is that that currency is is authenticity, is being truthful, like being more expressive. Uh, you know, putting yourself out there and kind of hoping that people will catch you, I suppose. Um, and that's what people are being rewarded for, and I think that's what they really are enjoying about it. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So one last question. We'll end with a, a fun one. Yeah. So if, if Michael Scott, and that's the, the boss on the office, for anybody who doesn't know, if Michael Scott made a list, what would be on it? <laughs> um, he would probably tag 99 different people um, and ask if they'd like to be his friend. <laughs> that sounds right. I <laughs> like reasons I'm the best boss. Yeah, reasons I'm the best boss. I, I actually, so I still, I never stop having ideas for the office, and I've made a couple lists of uh, office ideas that I wish we could have done post-2012. Oh. Beats by Dwight headphones. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, Beats, like the headphones. Yeah. I, I wish we could have done that. I wish we could have done a Snowden-inspired episode where Ryan unleashes everyone's information. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm glad you asked that, because I, I, once you start, once you write for something like that, I think those characters always live inside you. Yeah, never leaves you. Yeah. All right. Right on. Thanks so much, Thanks guys. Thanks so much, Greg. See you on the app. Thank you. Yeah.